Think about this. Self-employed people make up over 15% of the current workforce in Canada. And on top of that, you've got people who are contracted, commissioned, and making income from variable other expenses. So this impacts nearly one to two in 10 people, a massive percentage of people that are basically getting less qualification than they really could. If you're a business owner, you're self-employed, contracted, whatever that might be, one of the biggest challenges that you're probably ever going to face is to figure out how to actually qualify for a mortgage. Now, most people don't necessarily want a mortgage, but it is a necessary evil, and it actually could be one of the most beneficial wealth tools you'll ever have in your career. But here's the thing, a lot of banks don't necessarily agree with your accounting and a lot of business owners don't really fully understand the financial element of getting a mortgage application. And so we're gonna talk specifically today about how to get financing if you're a business owner, the three key types of financing that are available as of right now, and more importantly, how to determine whether or not it might make sense to purchase a property sooner, even if there's a different cost versus waiting to have a potential lower cost. So you might have already had this problem at this point right now. You went to the bank, they talk to you, they look at your documentation, they look at your income taxes and they say, actually, Mr. and Mrs. X, you only qualify for a mortgage of this amount. And that amount is significantly less than you thought you'd qualify for based on the amount of revenue that your business is bringing in. And the reality is, is you probably do deserve to qualify for a lot more. And you've probably proven that you've earned a lot of revenue in your business, but because you actually put a small number on your income tax return or chose to keep a lot of money in the business, your bank has flat out said, nope, we're not able to help you qualify. You can't get this mortgage you're looking for. That is the most common thing that we come across on a daily basis over here on our team that people are dealing with when it comes to qualifying to get a mortgage and get financing on a residential piece of real estate, whether that be a rental or an owner occupied property for our clients who are business owners. And this is a common theme for people who are looking to get financing, whether it's in their first, second year of business or their 10th year of business, because there isn't really any breakdown on what you need to do if you're a business owner or how to get qualified if you are self-employed. If you're a business owner, you often have a few key questions to ask yourself. How much money do I pay myself? How much money do I claim as far as income, whether that be dividends or T4s? Should I be incorporated? And if I am incorporated, how much money stays in the actual company versus how much money comes out? And does it make more sense to pay myself more personal income, or should I reduce that amount and pay myself less tax? Now, here's the interesting thing. Your accountant obviously should be primarily focused on how to pay less taxes, but most of the banks are focused on how much income that you show that you earn personally. And so inherently, there's often a conflict in trying to figure out, well, do I pay myself more, pay myself more taxes, or do I pay myself less? and of course, save money on taxes. This doesn't need to be the case. What you need to understand is the different levels of self-employed financing. Okay, so there are three common lending options for people who are business owners or self-employed. First and foremost, we have what we call qualified income. Now, to break that down, you need to understand some of the basics of mortgage lending, and we have done a video in the past about how to qualify for a mortgage, but let's give you some of the key guidelines. Essentially, if you want to fall under the conventional or qualified self-employed programs, which is typically what most people do if they're going to a conventional bank, credit union, or mortgage lender where they want to have the best rates and terms, you need to be able to show a proven history of being a business owner over a period of time. Now, this ultimately means that you typically need to have two years of taxes filed as a business owner consistently. The second thing is that what this means is that your bank, lender, or company that you're working with, if you're looking at conventional financing, typically is going to look at an average of those two years in whatever way that you qualify for a mortgage. Now, the thing about self-employed lending is there's so many variables. So in everything I say today, please keep in mind, there are some different variables that might be there. So you need to talk to someone who's an expert in this space. Now, coming back to qualified income, this is what most people go to when they're going to their bank, whether that be big green, big red, or the other ones that are out there. Typically, again, what the bank will do is they'll look at your notice of assessment or your tax returns and look at how much income that you've claimed from your business, whether that you be a sole proprietor or incorporated, and they're going to look at the two years average. But here's the most important thing. If it's a two year income and you've had a declining amount, then typically they're going to use the lower of those two amounts when they're looking to qualify you. Now, often what happens is people claim less income on their tax return because they actually spend money in their business. So because of that, those numbers that you're actually reporting on your tax return will actually qualify you for a lower amount. Now, there are some ways around this to a degree, and without getting into too much detail, some lenders allow you to add back some of your expenses from your company into your income, depending on whether or not you're a sole proprietor 
or you're incorporated. The second option is that some lenders will allow us to increase this amount by up to 10 and sometimes 15% to consider those expenses. The third option to consider is that there are other programs that are called stated income, where if you're putting down at least 10% of the property, they will consider a higher amount of business expenses to add back to your application. It's important to note though, under these stated income programs, there is a higher mortgage insurance costs. If you're familiar, CMHC, or Sagan are two of the insurers in Canada that offer these types of lending programs. Again, there are many different variables and some options are allowed to be added back and others are not. Now, if you're less than two years in business, typically speaking, those options are not available other than a very few number of exceptions such as doctors, or health professionals who have shown a proven history of working in the field before and are transitioning. Again, talk to us so we can find out for you. Now, ultimately, if you don't fit in those guidelines and let's assume you're earning a higher amount of revenue, but your income taxes have only been filed for one year or it's not quite enough to qualify, you might fall into option number two, which is what we call a stated income program. In short, most of your conventional banks and lenders don't offer this type of financing because there's too much risk. But there are quite a few banks and lenders in the country that offer these programs. This is not private financing. This is still institutional or bank financing. It's just not something that you see from your conventional banks like your big greens and big reds and so forth. How these types of programs work is they will actually look at a few different types of factors. They could look at the revenue in your business that you're earning and look at your retained earnings. They could also look at just the revenue in your business, sometimes for six months and sometimes for 12 months. In many circumstances, and there are different ways to calculate this, they can look at your bank statements to see if as long as you have invoices, how much money is coming into your company over a period of time and utilize the actual revenue, a percentage of that for your income. As you can imagine, this could be a significant amount more income than you would find from your conventional banks. What's more is most of these lenders allow higher rental qualification offsets, which means they can use more rental income to offset the expenses, essentially qualifying for more. And they have a higher total debt percentage, which means they can borrow you more money based on your business revenue. Now it's important to note, of course, these lenders do a lot of due diligence. They ask for a lot more information and they will go deep. They're not looking at just one statement and saying, here's your mortgage, but they're not scary and there's not a significantly different cost. In fact, specifically, the cost for this type of a program is typically within a half to 1%, assuming you have good credit of any conventional bank. And we've even seen it where rates are aligned either the same or very close to what a regular bank would offer with one exception that these lenders do charge a fee because you're typically only with these banks for one, two or three years for most circumstances. Now that is the second category of self-employed lending. The third category of self-employed lending is basically to another level. You don't have perhaps as much in the sense of business records or maybe a shorter time frame, six months or less, you're buying a business. There are so many different variables that you can consider, but let's say for example, either way, you don't have as much proof of your income. This could be a subcategory that could fall just under those types of lenders, which means a slightly different cost associated with that because you have less proof of your income, or it could move into a mortgage investment corporation or a private lender where they will finance you based 100% on the equity that you have, as opposed to the amount of income that you earn. In my experience, most people that are self-employed that are getting a mortgage typically fall into one of the top two categories. And quite frequently, what we do is we work with our clients to help them understand how to get financing through that second category, and then eventually refinance up to the top category if it makes sense. So here are some key considerations that you need to be thinking about if you're a business owner and you're determining whether or not you should claim more income or you should consider the possibility of moving into one of these categories beforehand. Number one, how much down payment do you have? If you have less than 20% down payment, you will have less options available to you. Typically, you need to have at least 24 months of business under your belt and normally two years of tax filings unless you fit under one of those exceptions. So normally with less than 20% down, it is a two year average. If you have 20% or more down, this is when options get really interesting because you can explore some of these other lending programs. Depending on which city you're in, which community, and the population, these options can be available between 20 to 35% down payment. And as we mentioned before, can offer very flexible terms. Now, should you wait a year or two years and claim more income taxes so you can qualify with a conventional bank? I think the math is actually really simple. What you should look at is what is the average appreciation rate in your city over the course of last five, say, or 10 years. Do the math and look at what would that property value be if you were to wait two or three years 
and pay rent at the same time. And then look at the cost associated with purchasing one of these properties with these programs. Typically from there, you can add up the expense associated with paying yourself the income taxes and the appreciation that you might miss out on versus paying off a portion of principal on the actual property and of course owning a piece of real estate and realizing that appreciation yourself. In a lot of situations, you'll find that it actually makes more sense to claim the income later on and do it through smoothing as opposed to waiting to purchase a piece of real estate. Now, every situation is unique, so you need to speak to a broker who actually will talk to your accountant and vice versa, that you have a clear plan, you know the numbers, and you can make a decision to understand what you're doing if you're a business owner. Here are some other simple wins for business owners that maybe already have a conventional mortgage who move to being self-employed later. You can actually use as we talked about before, money from your company for a down payment on a property if you need to. There are business programs available and mortgages available for you to take money out of your property to invest or to utilize that money to invest into your business if necessary. You can also look at utilizing the equity in your existing property to pay off taxes, other expenses that could be related to your business and invest into other types of programs. Ultimately, the key here is to understand, does it make more sense to wait to purchase and or does it make more sense to pay the difference in cost and understand exactly what these costs are. But the biggest thing at the end of it all is do you know what you can qualify and are you working with someone who understands self-employed lending? If you found this video helpful and you wanna find out more about business owner mortgages, then you need to drop us an email or send a message in the links below so we can help you understand what makes the 